The setup for the movie is uh, uh, Eichmann, uh, one of the, ar the architect of the Holocaust, uh, has been found, and he is in Argentina in Buenos Aires. And a call comes into the Mossad that they've they've found him. They know where he is, um, and so a group is assembled. And this all really happened. A group is assembled to go to Buenos Aires to uh, make sure that it, it is in fact him, and then uh, kidnap him, capture him without anyone noticing, and fly him out of there again without the government noticing, without his family noticing, without anyone. Uh, even knowing what's happened until he is in Israel and can stand trial. So this is the story that follows that um, operation. Malkin, the, the reason why he, he was the guy that was brought on board was because he's a, as a, as a physical guy and he was the one that was going to figure out how to actually get the guy, grab the guy and bring him back. And that was about, supposed to be pretty much it. Uh, also, he... Um, to disguise him, he was a master of disguises, and he was an artist, uh, self-taught artist. Did a lot of painting and drawing and and uh, sculpture, and so he was made great with his hands. Uh, and the fact that that he ends up filling this strange role that he didn't expect, which is the person to empathize with this monster, the seemingly unempathizable uh, person. And so, and he realizes this is his job, which in a way is the hardest job of all, is how to, how to relate to someone that has done these horrible things to, him, to his own family, to his own sister. And, you know, and so the, the conflict within wanting to get the job done, but in order to get the job done, you're having to do something that's pretty vile. The day before shooting, uh, Sir Ben and I got together and we had a dinner where uh, we had a lot of drinks and a lot of fun and talked about all sorts of things. And at the end of that, he said, all right, now forgive me if from here on out, all I'm able to muster up is a good morning because I'm going into this, this bubble and uh, it's such a, for him, such a challenging and difficult character to play because he himself, you can't help but get infected by some of the, that energy. Uh, that he that he needed to go down in that way. So, uh, and that was an incredible commitment that he he really had the discipline to maintain throughout this whole shooting. It's an amazing ensemble that that's been put together for uh, for for everyone across the board. But uh, the people that I work with so closely, like Melanie uh, Laurent and, and uh, Nick Kroll and uh, Michael Aronoff and Greg Hill and uh, Leo, it's just they're such such great actors and, and really um, really fun fun people to be around. Uh, it was great to get to. to to hang out that much with Nick. He's, he's one of the funniest people I've ever met. Um, and yeah, and with Melanie as well, working uh, constantly on trying to really uh, um, reveal the nature of that relationship and track it through and, and make it make sense, but also be surprising, also not be the cliche that you expect. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a very subtle and complex um, subplot happening through the film yeah. and I think that we've been really diligent to try to make it be truthful but also something that that is has classic elements uh, for a story like this. I think first and foremost we're trying to make a good movie. We're trying to make a movie that will be entertaining but uh, also that will be uh, emotionally engaging uh, that will share uh, in a very detailed way, a piece of incredible history that happened. Um, and I think it, it, there's some incredible insights into what justice is and how to deal with the enemy and what separates uh, um, the, the kind of, that, that philosophy, that Nazi fascist philosophy versus the humanist one, the one that is based in empathy uh, and a sense of, of, of right. Working with, with Chris Weitz uh, has been um, better than I could have even imagined. It was, I was 
nervous about coming uh, here. It was, it's been at the, it was a very intense year for me personally, and I just finished uh, Hamlet, uh, which was a very intense four-hour version of the show. We were doing it for four months, and then I immediately came down here with a, a newborn child, and and uh, and I knew this was a massive film that we were going to be doing, and uh, and from the minute it got on set. Uh, Chris is, just has such a easy sensibility. He's very kind, he's incredibly intelligent. Uh, he already has the film uh, in a way cut in his head. So, in, but that doesn't, that didn't uh, equal stringency. It actually equaled a lot of freedom because since he has a, a real clear sense of what the movie is, uh, in some way it became easier to play and to improvise. And, uh, he's been one of the best collaborators that I've, I've ever uh, had a chance to make a film with. Hey, don't close out. Stay with me because I have a really cool movie fact. Did you know the Hollywood star who played the most leading roles in feature films was John Wayne, who appeared in 153 movies? Now, you don't always have to have the leading role to make records, as the star with the most screen credits is John Carradine, who has been in over 230 movies. And I've been in... Uh... Anyway, are you a John Wayne fan? What's your favorite movie with the actor? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, we publish new videos every day. So be sure to subscribe for more great content. Bye bye.